Hello, Cece. Hello. Hello there. Um, thank you so much for coming on my YouTube channel. It's such a joy to have you. Um, I'm just going to summarise uh, you as much as I can. And I'm sorry if I miss some things out. Um, you've had such an amazing, extensive career. Um, so you are um, a classically trained pianist and you also worked as a backing singer for some time with the likes of Diana Ross um, and you've since become one of the world's top vocal and performance coaches. Viewers will know you from shows such as The X Factor and American Idol. You've coached stars like Charlotte Church, S Club 7, Will Young and lovely, lovely Leona Lewis and um, You've also worked on Brit films like Idris Elba's Yardi and Gorinda Chadder's Blinded by the Light, which is very cool. Um, you're also a life coach. Um, in 2018, you launched a new music therapy initiative called The Power of Music, which empowers young people going through hard times. Um, and on top of all of those achievements, you've been making musical coaching videos that use the power of um, breath, singing and music to help us during these turbulent times that, the, as you pointed out before, that the entire world is going through at the moment. Um, have I missed anything? <laughs> nope, that comes <laughs> Um, so with all of those accolades, I was thinking, I, I know that some people might think that you've had it easy in some ways because you've achieved so much. And I think often we look at people on paper and think, oh, look, they must have had some kind of magical, easy life. But you're no stranger to adversity yourself, are you? That's right. I um do you know, I'll take it right back. As a little girl, I used to be very shy, really shy. I mean, I'm very talkative now when people have seen me at different events or where, where I've had to speak. But as a child, I was very shy, didn't know how to talk to people or what to say. And I think that's why one of the reasons, anyhow, where I sort of got lost in music because it really helped me in that sense of confidence. It helped me with things like at school with when I was doing maths, I would be able to do the count based on the count that you would have in playing classical music on the piano. Mm. Um, so for a variety of reasons, I, I feel that music saved me in many, many ways. And when I was 17 is when I started working in the industry and everyone says to me when they meet me, they say, oh my gosh, you were 17 and you got this huge job and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, it didn't quite work like that. You know? <laughs> at school, I was quite shy. I'd be sitting in a corner at lunchtime. Sometimes I would just go into the music room to practice away because I didn't know what to say to people. Oh. And, but that steadfast rehearsing rehearsing again and again with the piano who would have thought that i would have then had the opportunity that i did i think i also had wonderful people that i happened to meet but not just to meet them but i was ready for the moment and the the door that they opened for me so once i went in that education that was so important but then i got older had wonderful experiences but I had to spend extra hours in doing what I did so some of my friends would be going out to party I didn't do that I would be late at night reading another book or listening to something else at that time it was CD <laughs> <laughs> good old CDs it was just a lot of hard work yeah. and then even up to when I had my daughter Four months after I had her, I was still very much of a workaholic and I had a near-death experience. Now, I had a fully ruptured, brain ruptured. It was really bad. I couldn't walk, I couldn't speak. But even in that an moment... An aneurysm. An aneurysm. Yeah. And even in that moment, I was... I went through a very, very dark place. But again... Where, where music, were you when it happened, Cece? I was living in Los Angeles at the time because my business is set up both in London and Los Angeles, back and forth. And I was in Los Angeles and that 
particular day, really early in the morning, I had to fly into Vegas. And it's, it was only 45 minutes to fly into Vegas. And then I would have been back in LA in the afternoon. So I headed out and it was an important meeting. I had my sister was with me for this meeting that we had. And in the meeting, I kept feeling very, like I was just sweating and I didn't know something was, it just wasn't quite right. Mm -hmm. And um, on a slight headache, I was getting over a period of time, but not so bad, but bad enough. And in the middle of the meeting, I passed out in this restaurant where we were having the meeting. And luckily enough, I was taken straight into the hospital and they realized what had happened. Um, but it was a very dark period of time. But again, even though I was in that dark place, I had to, you know, believe in myself or to try. And I did. And so I, I'm able to walk and speak again. But I want to bring it back to music was an anchor for me in many, many ways. And I firmly believe, I'm not a scientist, but I have read and done a lot of research on the importance of music, both music and sport actually, the importance of those two areas for people across the world, not just in one, one type of place. And it doesn't matter whether we come from, you know, a very poor family, middle class, upper class, it doesn't matter. We all have one thing in common and that is the importance of music and different genres of music, but the importance of it and being active with sport, whether we like to sing or whether we like to listen to someone sing, whether we play an instrument or whether we like to listen to someone play and the same in sport. So this is something that I've always believed in. And so back to your, the question you asked, no, I have not had an easy ride, which is what many people think when they see someone has achieved something. You know, there's, there's always a dark place and a low place that we've all been in. It's just, we handle it differently. And that's why everyone that I meet, no matter what age they are, I try to say to them, don't wait for someone to come and tell you that you might be okay. Believe in yourself. I have an exercise. I say to people, stand, look at yourself in the mirror. If you don't want to look at yourself in the mirror, look up <laughs> or look down look to the side, but say after me, I am me and nobody else but me. And I'd rather be nobody else but me. Now that phrase is not something that I made up. Mm -hmm. I changed the phrasing of it, but I remember it was at school at a young age, and it was a nun who was a teacher at the school, and she said that. And something in it clicked inside of me. I thought, yes, I am me. Okay. <laughs> I am me, yeah. It's, it's not simple, but I think, yeah, a lot of people have that, oh, I wish I was someone else, I wish I wasn't me, and um, yeah, I think just saying that could be really inspirational, actually, thank you. Um, and I think just to kind of double down on that point, you've, what you've, you've consistently done, I think, is um, try and look for the lesson in everything. So whether it's something good is happening or something not so, not so great, like a brain aneurysm, which I'm really, I'm sorry happened to you and I'm very impressed with how you handled it. Um, You've looked for a lesson. I didn't handle it every day. I had, and this is what I really want to make it clear to everyone. I didn't handle it every day. I had days where I was just in tears, in mm. complete, complete darkness. Mm. Um, the issue is with everyone that's out there, whether they are in a low, low place that people will say that's a low place or they're feeling in a low place, but no one sees that. Mm. I think it's, it's both are just as important. And that's the first lesson I try to teach people because they'll say, well, I know they won't understand because that happened to, mm. to them, but this app. I say to people, it's really important to, to recognize if you are in a low place. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. The second step is not to allow yourself to stay there, but we do have the ability, if we wanted, to do something about it. And you only have to take one small step 
and then fall again. But at least you made that one step. Yeah. And then start again and then fall again. Because we will <laughs> always fall. This is what I bring it up. We will always fall. Think of a child when they're about to walk. <laughs> yeah. And they fall. They will, won't they? <laughs> And no one tells them, and they certainly don't tell themselves, oh, don't bother with this walking business. Just, just give up now. Exactly. So you're absolutely right. I am a firm believer. That is the one area that is find something positive, even if you think it's a small positive. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Like taking those baby steps. Um, so bringing it back to uh, what you're creating at the moment, which is, um, just a real gift really is um, you're, you're combining a lot of your knowledge and you're putting it into some videos on Instagram and YouTube um, on the, the power really of um, a lot of the things that you're very good at so singing and breathing and the power of music. Um, can you tell me a bit more about those videos and what inspired you to make them? Well, it's, I felt inspired because of me realizing, hang on a minute, I'm wearing all these hats at the moment and I don't think I'm good at all. I've, I've known myself to be very versatile and flexible, but <laughs> how do I do this? <laughs> and I just thought, you know what? Other people will be going through this. So mm. why don't we do this together? Mm. The beauty of computers that we have today that we didn't have, well, many people didn't have this a long time ago we've got an end something that we can actually help us to speak to anyone anywhere in the world mm. in any moment of time that they're going through even if we didn't want people to see us so i thought why don't we do some basic things all together just from conversations that i've had with people where they've said oh my gosh and even in like i said in my own life with my daughter and with my partner's son. They're the same age, eight years old. And sometimes they are so active, I have to go into the toilet. That's where I have to go to do my breathing. <laughs> I can't flip out in front of them, they're eight years old. You know? I want them to keep being vibrant and what have you. But sometimes that's a bit much for me. So I have to go into the bathroom and breathe out and then I'll come out and see them and I'll be like, ah, oh, yes, I love you again. <laughs> Very sad. Very sad. I thought, couldn't just be me. This must be other mothers out there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought, let me do these exercises. And also for people who they don't have children, this is also important for them mm -hmm. because people will be worried about money, how they're going to function, with you know when they're feeling a bit down they haven't seen their friends or you might have people who are actually having a great time with all of this because they're not missing anyone but at the same time it, it's good to encourage them to try and dare to do things that they've never done before so mm. that's why i've done it because i really want to tap in and you know just to have some basic i'm deliberately calling it basic exercises that we naturally do but when we're going through a low point we forget that those are things that are very key for just how our brain works mm. in by doing that endorphins is something that triggers in our brain and it naturally makes us feel as if someone has given us a hug or we're laughing just everything health wise it's better for us mentally it's better for us and i think as a community it it's it's very important one of the beautiful things in the uk there there's lots of difference that we've got but there's a lot of unity that we have and i've spoken about this before we have people who have been born in the caribbean like myself i was born in trinidad and i moved here when i was 14 years old and i feel i'm very British in many ways because I love my tea you know <laughs> give me my tea to drink and to do with my education and with health what we've got with NHS what we've got with the ability where houses have been built for people who didn't have enough finance and so they were helped in different things this country the root of this country has done great things that we don't talk about enough mm -hmm. you have to understand I lived 
and I had my business also in Los Angeles. Right. Yeah. Very, as beautiful as it is with the, you know, showing off and, you know, I was structured and set up in Beverly Hills. I mean, beautiful. I certainly appeal to that as well. Yeah. But uh, we don't have there. You do not have what we have here, which is the basics. When I was in Los Angeles, when I was about to have my daughter, when I was taken into hospital, the first question that was asked was not, let me see about you. It was to ensure that I had the finance for them to see about me in hospital. And so this is where I want to bring it back. There's a lot that we need fixed in the UK, but at the same time, there is so much that we have. And so for me, it's again, it's bringing, being a part anyway, of trying to bring us together as a, a true unity, because we are the United Kingdom. And I see that in many, many ways. And what you were saying, like those essential values of being British, however you define them, seem to tap into your values as well of um, the idea of the NHS being available for everyone, the idea of equality, um, non-judgment, welcoming. Um, I think they're all things that you embody yourself. So um, I think that's really nice. Um, can you take me through an exercise, CC? Oh, great. Well, to start with, what I'd like you to do is I'm going to stand up so you can see something. If you can put your hands on your stomach, hair, and I'm going to say, hey, you. Hey, you. Now, when you say, hey, you, tell me if you can feel a kick in your stomach. Hey, you. Hey, you. Do you feel the kick? Yeah, it's pulling in slightly as well. Great. So I want you to take a breath in. Well, first of all, relax your shoulders and relax your neck. My shoulders are never relaxed. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Come take your hand on yeah. this. And then just back. And then let your hands just fall by your side. Now you're going to take a breath, but imagine that this area is like a balloon. If you blow into the balloon, it gets bigger. So when you breathe in, I want you to feel your stomach coming out. And then when you're breathing out, tss, do that on it and feel your stomach coming in. So um, this is where I'm going to, you're going to see, I'm breathing in, stomach out. And as I'm breathing out, as I'm talking, stomach is going in. I'm exaggerating it for you to see. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Great. Now, as you're doing it, do it sitting down. And this is what I want everyone to do. You can be sitting down. You could be in your bathroom. You could be on your bed. You could be in the kitchen. You could be in the loo. Exactly. And then with that, you take that breath in, but you're feeling it from that lower place that I mentioned. Breathing in and breathing out. And even having a picture in your mind, you don't need to tell me what that is, but it could be something where you're taking that breath in and it's, it could be something that you're really annoyed about, really frustrated about, you know, my God, like, what am I, how am I going to get finance for next month? Take that breath in, but then you're going to breathe out and see that coming out and you're letting go of it it's going to be all right you see because what you're doing is mentally you are saying to yourself yes this is hard but i may not be able to control that but i can control how i'm going to deal with this that's why it's really important for us this is the opportunity and for me to go do you know what? Let's have some exercises or certain things where we're able to talk and, you know, relate to each other as a country and figure out, actually, we're not happy about this. And then, but then why are we not happy about it? When did we decide that we're not happy about it? That way we're sort of having a language that we're learning about adapting because we are people who will adapt constantly that we change 
And like I said, there's, for me, there's stuff that I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing in a year, two years, but I know I want something different, but I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> and that can be, you know, the, the same kind of feelings of, of being a bit scared of that could also very easily be the feelings of being excited about that. And you can almost sort of choose how, where you are on that spectrum of not knowing about the future um, exactly. physically physiologically it's, it's quite a similar reaction exactly thank you so much Cece is no, there anything no. else that you would like to add before we conclude no it's the same thing just really encouraging people out there to somehow to find your voice that voice that is truly speaking inside of us thank you that's wonderful I will link to your uh, your channel down below on mine. Great, sounds good. Thank you.